if yeah, you guys want to stand, we will start with some worship this morning. sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings Amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you would lay down your life, that I would be set free, oh, oh, oh Jesus I sing for that you've done for me who brings out chaos who brings out chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king of glory who's the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my darkness my god that is who you are you 
are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you, I worship you. stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you working even when i don't feel it you working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you working even when i don't feel it you working you never stop you never stop working In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making a new life. 
In the present Thank you. 
what you feel I want to see what you see I'm not in a hurry when it comes to your spirit when it comes to your presence when it comes to your voice I'm learning to listen just to rest in your nearness I'm starting to notice you are speaking I'm not in a hurry when it comes to your spirit when it comes to your presence when it comes to your voice I'm learning to listen just to rest in your nearness I'm starting to notice you are speaking open my eyes I want to see you open my ears I want to hear you speak tell me your thoughts So we come near, Lord. Maybe in some cases we feel like we need you nearer than we might have in the context of this week. And so would you come, Jesus? As we are in your presence, as we choose to be close, as we choose to draw near. And Lord, we pray for Zidi, which was in a time of turmoil. We ask that you would watch over him as people. And we pray for our whānau, our church whānau, some, quite a few of whom are in their own turmoil with flooding and things. And we ask that you would draw close and help us draw close um, to be there in the right ways for people in their needs. I think it's a it's a good time as we you know we've sung about not being in a hurry just to just to bring before God those who are dear and near to your heart. You know you'll know some people are flooded. You'll know you know maybe something not com- not di- uh, directly attributable to the weather at all. Um, but let's just bring them before God in our hearts. So collectively, Lord, we lift those who are near and dear. And we pray, Lord, for our Facebook whānau today, um, some of whom may well be not at church because of things that have happened along the way this week, and we ask your blessing on each and every one of them as they are with us, um, either live or, or, or later in the day, and we ask that you would just draw close, and um, maybe even some of the things that they're experiencing now, that you would meet them in a whole new way. Just bless them, we pray. And Lord, just for our service and our people, our children, today. Watch over them, we pray. Draw near as we meet and as we love you and as we grow and as we are a community together. We thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Hey, God bless you, everyone. Thank you, Charlotte and team, for um, leading us in worship so beautifully. If I haven't met you, my name's Vic. Uh, I get to pastor here at Shaw Vineyard, which I'm delighted to be able to do today. Uh, Macarita will be speaking in a little while um, as uh, we, we sort of open up the beginning of the year. For those of you who are here for the first time uh, of this year, it's only our second service of the year. Happy New Year. It's um, lovely to be here. For those of you who are visiting, uh, of which at least two of you have flown in from overseas before uh, the airport um, sort of disappeared under the deluge, welcome to Auckland. It's not always like this, but crikey, it's been a heck of a week, hasn't it? Uh, and to those in our Fano, um, as I say, both here uh, and on Facebook Live, bless you um, as you so, uh, mop up and as you um, sort of deal with some of those things, insurance and all of that, we just trust that you'll be close. Let, do let us know how we can help you. And so even for people that you know, it doesn't have to be through church. Let's just be the people who turn up with a with a pie or something like that, you know, kind of the, what, what family does. Um, I think that would be a fantastic thing. Um, so our children's pastor, Fraser, his um, father-in-law passed away last night. So uh, many of you know Fraser and Becca. Um, and so that's sort of a sad thing that sort of um, is um, they're going through at the moment. Um, Fraser's just um, gone this morning down to New Plymouth, which is where um, Becca's parents uh, live. And so um, this is not unexpected, but it is obviously still really sad. So in a moment, as we let the children go, um, uh, Joel will be um, looking after them today and Deborah, um, but let's just pray for them um, specifically now and then we'll let the kids go. So Lord, we just we just lift Fraser and Becca and um, Becca's mum and sister um, to you. Lord, we just recognise the, um, you know, kind of the, the cycle of life sort of thing and sort of it's a, in a, some ways a, a blessed end to a long fight, but we also recognise the that this is painful and you only have one dad and and that this is a uh, something that um, Becca in particular and Fraser, of course, as well, um, are deeply affected by. So would you, even as he drives this morning down to be with his family and his um, extended family, be close to him, be close to Becca and the rest of the family as they make those decisions. They say their farewells and, you know, just right through the week, we ask that you would just be super close. And again... If we are prompted, Lord, would you help us to be uh, whānau and family and support for them during this week as well? Uh, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, bless you guys. If you are a primary schooler and you're back at school this week, I do know you'll be going out with Joel, who's just coming to the back there, and Deborah, who's just coming to the back. Uh, if you are an intermediate early high schooler, you'll be going out with Carly. Uh, I'm not sure if we've got anyone here who had to come back from Festival One. So sorry for you guys who were flooded out of Festival One. What a shame that was. So are oh, you guys, yeah, so, so it's like, um, man, there's lots of stuff happened, hasn't it? So that's, that's been really tough. Hey, um, as a church, as we move back together again for the new year, we've got lots of things that are happening. Um, so next week, we're going to begin the process of renovating in here. Um, so at the end of our service next week, we're going to be asking particularly for people to help us with a bit of muscle, take the stage out. It's actually quite heavy into the foyer. Um, and the carpeters uh, um, will be coming in both that week and the following week, and we're fixing sound and doing all of those sorts of things. So just be aware of that. It shouldn't take long, um, but um, a little bit of muscle will be great. Um, we've also got tons of things that are coming up really to bring community together, to bring us together. Um, so uh, for all of those, if you check out our website, What's On, um, that will be really helpful. But specifically, some of the things that are happening in two weeks' time, we have a volunteer's lunch here at church after church. We think we'll do it in here, which will be the last day on the carpet. Um, which might be a little bit of a, a challenge to keep our behavior really good, um, particularly mine. So um, that food fight sort of thing um, does seem to beckon in some way. So um, if you're a volunteer, we would love you to join us. I don't really think we're doing a food fight or it won't be a sanctioned one, but one never knows. One never knows what might happen on the last day of this delicious carpet that we have. There's probably more food on the carpet than there will be that we feed you, um, even at the moment. So that's, if you're a volunteer, we would love you to stay. And let's face it, most of us are volunteers in some way because we're generous, giving, 
warm people, aren't we? So we would love you to stay and be part of that. What else have we got? We're going to do a picnic afterwards, guaranteed sunshine. We're going to be um, out in the, um, the park just down the road, so at the bottom of the skate park. Some of you will have been over there with us before. Really shady down there, um, pretty flat, and um, it will be a lovely place to be. So, again, bring your own lunch for that, but so just so that we can hang out. And then we have um, camp out coming up the 10th and the 12th of March. So we've finished doing bookings, so we've got, we've got a lot of people who are going. Um, but you can still book sites, but through the Parkery Camp. So it's Parkery Holiday Camp, I think, Holiday Park. Um, you'll get it if you Google. We would love you to come and be with us. There won't be a service that Sunday morning, um, but we do hope as many of you as possible can join us. That would be fantastic. What else? Um, we're going to be kicking off small groups soon. So if you are part of a small group already, you'll kind of have a bit of a route in. Um, if you would like to be part of a small group but aren't at the moment, Talk to Paulina, who's our operations pastor at the back there. Um, and if you would like to, to lead a small group this year or sort of host one or whatever, we're just in that, that sort of really nice toing and froing process of late January, early February, while these things come together. And we have holiday weekends and people are in and out and we have a, an apocalyptic flood along the way and all of these sorts of things. As those things happen, we um, will sort of solidify some of these things coming into sort of the middle of February. So we would love you, love you to be part of that process. What else? We would love you to give. Giving's a really important part of who and what we are. And so that's, um, if you go to our website, that's the best way to grab it. If you want to give by cash, you can do it in the little slot in the green box or indeed by FPOS down there. And I think with that, that's probably the best uh, sort of summary of where we're at as a church. It is a, I was thinking yesterday as I'm sort of driving around to some of your places, picking up um, dehumidifiers and dropping them off at other people's places. It's like, what a great thing it is to be in that very small way, you know, sort of, you know, kind of, yes, I've got one, yes, I can take one, yes, you know, kind of, I'm flooded, and sort of just a, these small connections that we're able to do. What will we be without each other? You know, it's great to be together. So let's, you know, I, I don't know, not just in, not just in terrible rain, but let's just be those sorts of people. I just, I think, what a, what a great opportunity it is for us as a church to be that sort of church. So hopefully we'll see lots of that happening in 2023 um, and God bless you in that. So we've all got a story to tell. <laughs> we've all got a story to tell of some sort, whether we slept through it or whether we were ankle deep or, or, or chest deep. So why don't we just take a few minutes to to um, tell how we missed going to Elton John or you know, tell her or something like that. Tell each other, sort of, we just flew in or something, and um, and we got to Auckland. Only rains in Auckland. Whatever we'd like, and we'll be back to you in a little while. I'm just going to talk to our Facebook Live uh, family, and then Macarita will be back. Well, bless you. It does feel um, important this little conversation, while people around here are having their own conversations, but it does feel important to be speaking because. Uh, there'll be some who are watching us today, <clears throat> maybe taking a little bit of time out from clearing up some floodwaters, or, or maybe later in the day and you can't be here. So bless you. Maybe, maybe you're just on a long Auckland anniversary weekend holiday, and you're having a whale of a time. I don't know. I don't know where you'd be having a whale of a time. Maybe in Wellington or the South Island or, or, or overseas or something. So I'm um, bless you guys uh, wherever you are, but particularly if. Things are a little bit tough at the moment. Um, so do let us know if things are tough. Do let us know um, if you have any needs. There is a sense of warmth and a sense of connection that, that is around people and the desire to really help people in their process. So, so um, you know, we've prayed for you in the, in the service already, but we want to continue to pray for you and to be close to you. So let me tell you my story, um, and I'm sure you have a better one. But we were heading up to Parkery where we have a caravan. We got um, blocked by floodwaters. Um, we turned around to come back. This is Fran and me. Um, and when we went up State Highway 1, it was getting wild, maybe 3 or 4 in the afternoon. By the time we came back, it was getting really wild. So two really big slips on State Highway 1 that hadn't been there an hour, an hour and a half ago. Um, and then, you know, sort of just no cones, no no uh, sort of uh, revolving lights, nobody, no diggers or whatever, understandably, because it only just happened. And then, so everybody's pretty polite, So, we're, but we're having to go 
I don't know, the, the outside half of the of the lane of the other on the oncoming lane and people no no lights but people having to be polite to let a whole new load through the other way. We got back, we have an electric car, we had three percent um, power left, which is only about five, six, seven Ks left. And so we're having to we're having to miss different lights and sort of go this way and go that way. Anyway we got home and um, we're all fine. So that's just our little story. I'm I'm sure some of your stories are are wilder than that and more unfortunate than that and so bless you. So just um, I just want to pray for you um, wherever you are and just ask God's real best for you. So Lord, wherever our Fano from Facebook are today, would you watch over them, be close to them. Father, in every way, would you meet their needs? Would you um, send angels down their driveways with, I don't know, lasagnas and dehumidifiers? And just be close to them. And Lord, I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. We're going to get Makarita here and she's going to speak and share. Amen. Well, everyone, uh, do come back and, uh, and allow me to, to introduce to you. What a team. Stories, eh? Everybody's got stories. Hey, come on back to those at the end of um, church today. I'm sure we've still got things that we need to say. Um, um, Makarita wasn't here last week, but on our Facebook Live, she said, oh, that was, um, you know, a good good opening batsman, maybe. Maybe you said, it's a batter these days, isn't it? But uh, So Makarita, I feel like, you know, because you obviously have two opening batters in a, in a, in a cricket game. So it feels like to me she's she's my fellow, my my sharing opening batter of of the of the January services at Shaw Vineyard, and so she is going to lead us today. God bless you. Eh? Hello. Kia ora Vic, kia ora Fano. Um, if we haven't met yet, um, Makerita Tokuingwa, um, and. Uh, yeah, it's wonderful to um, to be here for our second Sunday. Um, as as Vic said, yeah, this is my debut too as an opening batsman. Um, whether you call it batter or not, I've, I'm, I don't have an issue, okay, batsman. I'm and so if you're familiar with the game of cricket, um, whether in test match, which for some of you who aren't, that's the long, boring version, um, or the limited overs um, cricket, which is like 2020, it's very exciting, and there's people in costumes, and you get like $5,000 if you catch the ball in the crowd. Um, the, the, the opening batsmen, right, they, they need solid mental preparation and habit formation um, so that they can stay focused during an innings. Um, it requires grittiness and discipline and patience and an adaptable technique. Um, and so I do it with a flower in my hair. Um, now, you might find that um, a helpful analogy for heading into 2023. You're welcome. Uh, however, if the person next to you has dozed off, um, as soon as I began with a sporting illustration, can you just give them a little nudge for me, please? Great. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure how your year has kicked off um, but what I am sure of is that um, God has been with you, no matter what. Um, and I hope that you haven't had a year like mine's been so far. Um, and I, um, but I do hope that what I share this morning brings you encouragement um, for the days that we have ahead of us. So, Galatians. Um, in the days known as the early church, um, the Apostle Paul wrote a letter to the church um, in Galatia, I call it that, which we have in the form of the book of Galatians in the New Testament. And there's two central themes of that book um, that keep drawing me back to it whenever I'm confronted with conflict um, or when I get sucked back into my insecurities about my self-worth um, or um, about the mark that I leave on this world. And those central themes are freedom, 
and unity in Christ. And so um, this message is a pun on the year, and it's, uh, I'm calling it 2020 free and, um, and, and focusing on freedom in Christ. There were Christians um, in the Church of Galatians. There were Christians who were really so preoccupied with keeping the law that it was splitting the church along racial lines, splitting Jews from Gentiles. Gentiles were non-Jews, right? So just briefly, what do we mean by the law here? Yeah, It stems from um, a com common ancient Near Eastern um, practice of covenant, you know, a promise between two people. Um, these days, we often call a marriage a covenant, right? It's, a, it's a, um, a promise between two people or two people groups, nations, and um, in this case, between God and Israel. And so the law that's referred to by Paul contains stipulations that no individual had been able to keep, and Israel as a nation continually demonstrated time and time again their inability um, to keep the law. So Israel broke the covenant and they became slaves. Slavery was what um, Paul calls the curse of the law. And yet the law was still used by Israel to create division. Division through using it as um, a set of rules or a list um, of what you must do to be one of us. Thankfully, it didn't stay that way. Yeah? The law, the covenant, was finally fulfilled through Jesus Christ. The cross, right? Jesus' death was um, the... Sorry... That was the work of freeing Israel and future humankind from the curse of the law. It was freedom from slavery. So God brought about a new covenant by sending Jesus to fulfill the original covenant. And that we would experience a relationship with God based on faith and not on works. The law that requires works was fulfilled. So the curse of the law, which is slavery and separation, was lifted and our new identity is as children of God. Galatians 3, um, verses 26 to 27 says, So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ, and there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ. That new unity transcends race, transcends social and gender barriers, and it's based on the truth of the gospel, which Paul speaks of earlier in that chapter in verses 13 and 14, where he says that Christ redeemed us so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Christ has set us free from the curse of the law so that we might receive his Spirit. And it's the Spirit not the law that gives us our identity in Christ. 2023 is my hope for all of you beyond 2023. And it's this verse. It is for freedom. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. There's two things that Paul calls us to in chapter 5. This, protecting our freedom from slavery, um, from slavery to the law. So protecting our freedom from slavery to the law. And then in verse um, 14, it's to use our freedom to fulfill the law by serving one another through love. Verse 14 says, For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this command. Love your neighbor 
as yourself. And how wonderful to see the love that people are having for their neighbours over this weekend. Strangers helping each other, pulling cars out of um, who knows where, cars that have floated off in places, um, and helping people to empty out their houses. So, what if we truly, what if we truly lived in this freedom that we have in Christ? How different would our daily choices look like? How, how different would they look if we were to live out the call of freedom in Galatians 5? Um, has anyone here um, ever bungee jumped? Oh, yay! Look at those hands. Fantastic. Anybody want to share how that experience was? Rob, had your hand up? <laughs> Okay. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. <laughs> so, okay, okay. So thank goodness Rob didn't become the crash test dummy. Uh, but that poor person who um, did have that, but Rob did his at Mount Smart. Um, there's someone over here. How how was it for you? It was good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. A brand new mum, and she says it was good and exhilarating. That's great, Leanne. Okay. So a few years ago in her 20s, um, just a couple of years ago in her 20s, um, Leanne um, sounded like she could have had an accident. Um, uh, yeah, of the bowel kind. Um, so, yeah, it was terrifying, yeah. Um, some time ago, um, I bungee jumped um, off the Auckland Harbour Bridge. The hardest part, the hardest part was jumping and letting go of the security of the solid platform that I was standing on, right? L yeah, that was the hardest part. Yes, I see nods, right? Letting go isn't easy. It's scary, yeah? It's even terrifying, like Leanne said. It's exhilarating, but it's scary, right? I had to let go of the security I had been up in that um, pod with my support crew so that I could actually complete what I wanted to do. But get a load of this, my goal wasn't to actually do a bungee jump, right? Figure that out. My goal was to celebrate freedom after a significant medical event, right? The second time that I jumped, which is straight after, I came back up, um, I was disappointed because I didn't get wet. Um, and then I jumped backwards, right? So, yes, the goal was to get wet, yeah? But I never would have gone backwards if I hadn't experienced the joy and the freedom of that first jump, yeah? It was easier second time round, yeah? Much more fun getting soaked, yeah? There's, um, there's a story um, just in terms of letting go, right? There's a story of a village in South India that had a problem with monkeys that were sneaking into their village and stealing food, right? Um, and someone came up with a clever trap, and the trap consists of a hollowed out coconut chained to a stake. Um, now, the coconut had some food inside, um, which can be grabbed through a small hole. Um, I guess, Vic, you're in the front row. Would you mind holding the microphone for me while I, while I demonstrate something, right? Um, no, I'm not going to put your hand through a coconut. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 as I said, the coconut had food inside, which could be grabbed through a small hole, yeah? So the monkey's hand fits fine through the hole, yeah? But he grabs the food and his clenched fist can't come back out. His clenched fist can't fit back out. The monkey is suddenly trapped, right? 
He's trapped himself. Thank you, Vic. Yeah. The monkey who doesn't have the intelligence to let go of the food enslaves himself to the trap. Now, we do this, right? We hold on to things that entrap us, right? Um, for some of us, it might be something good that by letting go, go of the tight grip we have on it, we might actually discover something greater. I'm just going to take this off. I can't do it. Right? I actually need to be able to maneuver. Yeah? So some of those good things, it might be work, right? Work's not a bad thing. God worked, and he's entrusted us to care for our world. But what if work has become all-consuming um, all and it's become the source of our identity? So much so that our relationships begin to suffer because we aren't able to let go of work when we walk through the front door at home. How much harder for someone who works from home, yeah? It might have to do with family. Again, not a bad thing to value family, but what happens when we fall into the mindset of needing to be the perfect parent, the perfect mom, dad to our girls? Yeah. What happens when we never want um, to let um, a flaw show on the highlight reels? Go Insta. Yeah. Because we want to show just how perfect our family is. Maybe it's the love of money, right? Not money in itself, just ask those of us who don't have any, right? But the love of it. For some of us, it might be an issue that we have wrapped around us as being our identity. Or it's become a prison to us. Body dysmorphia, a mental health diagnosis, a label we've taken on an offence that we've taken, or a past hurt. Now, every one of those examples are s serious and legitimate, right? Those are legitimate issues, but they can enslave us and keep us from living. Um, issues that with great support and help, we can find the path to live freely. And that path to living freely still acknowledges pain, yeah, it still acknowledges um, your pain, it doesn't exempt you from future pain, sorry, but it's a path where we find God has walked ahead of us, where we find he's walking beside us, even carrying me when I'm exhausted, and he's bringing up the rear end, not to kick my butt, but so that in those times when I look back, I see him in front of the addiction, in front of the status, in front of the narratives that I've told myself, in front of the situations and past hurts that I've become a slave to. A life of freedom includes letting go, yeah? The writer C.S. Lewis um, said this, Getting over a painful experience is much like crossing monkey bars. We're keeping the monkey theme. You have to let go at some point in order to move forward, right? Monkey bars, that it's like a ladder. I think we all know, right? Um, it's like a ladder that's um, horizontal, right? So to in order to move forward, we have to let go, right? The choice to let go is ours, but the journey to move forward doesn't have to be something that we do on our own, yeah? God's heart for us is to be in community with him and with each other. So part of our design is a life in community. We move forward with the support and help of each other. It has been a small group that, I've been, that has helped me to move forward in a lot of things. And our small groups are starting up. Great time for you to connect, right? It is for freedom that we have been set free. 
So Fano, I encourage you to firstly set your eyes on him who has set us free, to set your eyes upon Jesus. You know, even an atheist um, or agnostic can look to historical records and conclude that Jesus was kind. Jesus was inclusive. He was trusted. That he was an incredible person. Look at his following. Look at the records about him, right? Setting our eyes on Jesus can only but bring us confidence and comfort as we, my second point, let go and move on, right? Remember looking back? Looking back distracts us from what's in front of us. Yes, we will remember, but let's not let that get in the way of our future hope, of all that Christ continues to do through the work of the Spirit. We do a lot of remembering as Christians, right, in the Christian faith, so that we'll never forget our story. Christmas is about remembering. Communion is about remembering. Um, Easter is remembering. Lent, Pentecost, yeah, and on it goes. And in the book of Isaiah, God reminds Israel of their founding story. But then in Isaiah um, chapter 3, verse 8, Um, God says this, he says, but forget all that, it's nothing compared to what I'm going to do. And that verse always annoyed me, it's like, okay, so we're to remember, but then God tells us to forget all that. Scholars have confirmed that it wasn't a command to forget, but it was a hyperbole, right? An exaggeration to forget the former things as a way of calling Israel to actually hope in the future things God would do. Don't hang on to the past, but hope in the future things of what God will do, right? And I love that he says, it's nothing compared to what I'm going to do. Nothing compared to what I'm going to do. But sometimes letting go requires us to see and acknowledge God's forgiveness, right? When we identify the things that are keeping us trapped, it's confronting. Maybe it's the lies that we keep telling because of the shame that we have about our life. Maybe um, it's my choices in, um, or that keep an addiction going. Maybe it's my need to blame someone for a life that I'm dissatisfied with. But acknowledging God's forgiveness requires us to repent, which is sincere regret before our God of enormous love. Yeah? He's our God who sees past our failures and whose desire is that we're whole, that we're restored to a life of freedom. He freely forgives and he freely pours out his love upon us because we are all his children. Verse 28, there's neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, crusaders and blues, pro-vax, anti-vax, Kiwi, refugee. You are all one in Christ. So set your eyes on Jesus, and he'll help you to let go and move on. And the final thing that I want to encourage you encourage you with is to remember whakapono, faith, tumanako, hope, and aroha, love, right? By faith, we receive the Spirit that gives us our identity in Christ. I spoke of that earlier, right? We are no longer slaves. Jesus, our hope, continues to be our future hope as we walk in freedom. And everything, all of that and everything finds its roots in aroha, which is the greatest. Faith, hope and love, and the greatest of these is Love, 
here. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and don't let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. This is the confidence that we have in our huge God who wants us restored and whole. So as the band return and um, they're going to lead us through a song, at the end of that song, um, I'm going to invite some people up who, if anything has resonated for you today that, and you would like some prayer for, then please let God minister to you through the community. For our Facebook Fano, thank you. And if anything's resonated with you, then I pray that you'll ask God, ask the Spirit to help you, ask the Spirit to bring those around you who can help you to let go so that you can live freely. So Charlotte and the team. done for 